As we come closer to the end of the year, do you ponder what has happened this year? It could be something like a birth in the family or a graduation of a child. Maybe you won something like a prize or many other things. Well, the thing I had to say most I thought about this year is when my father fell a week before, or a couple days before Labor Day weekend, and uh, hitting his head and breaking his collarbone and the rib, along with tearing some muscles in his leg and his hip. As he was in the hospital, I had to wonder what comes next. What where should he go for rehab? Is he staying in rehab as an inpatient or is he going as an outpatient? All these things I had to ponder and they're very overwhelming. We find ourselves thinking more and more about what has gone on in 2023 and what do we do with it all. The good and the bad, the big and the small, as it caused you to think, is Jesus worthy of our worship? As believers, we know the answer. In fact, you can say we came to this point in our lives where we acknowledge the longing to worship Jesus because he is worthy and makes it clear with his birth and what it means. You can say that this pursuit is sort of like the Magi did. They want they wanted to worship the newborn king. Today's sermon is titled, Falling on Your Knees When the Lord Calls. Looking at Matthew chapter 2, verse 1, we are introduced to the wise men called Magi. There are people who are known for their knowledge of the stars like astronomers of today. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Matthew chapter 2, verses 2, and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. But the Magi were not the only ones who were called on. In Luke, we see it was also the shepherds. They were in the field tending to the flock. So when you think about who, when, and of course the why Jesus calls. It becomes evident that in Matthew and Luke it adds to the story of Jesus and that he did not come for just one kind of people but was calling for all kinds of people to come to him. These magi they may have been sort of like some of us at some point in our lives. People that felt deserving or were not interested in what God would lead them to. Yet these magis were like many other Gentiles that would find their way to Jesus, the truth and the light. They believed that the stars would tell of a long-awaited Messiah to be born. 
God in his mercy bless them and call them and to guide them to the plans he had for them. The honor of experiencing and living out the plans of God has in store for us. What is holding you back? Fear of taking that next step. Now we may not have a star to guide us, but we know God is still preparing a way still today. Amen. Now the Magi did not have all the answers. But we see in verse 2, they seek out King Herod to find out more. When King Herod heard what the Magi were asking, he became worried. He was feeling his throne was being threatened, but he didn't let, but he didn't tell them anything about that. Instead, he called on his people's chief priests and teachers that found the answer in Malachi chapter five, verse two. But you, Bethlehem, Ethora, though you are small among the clans of Judah. Out of you will come for, come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from the old, from ancient times. To the Magi, it was clear that gazing at the star would lead them to Jesus. King Herod, we see, was sort of blind with fear yet wanted to search for Jesus so he could kill him. You can come to the conclusion, even though the Magi did not know what was to come in the future, they still follow the calling God had for them. We follow. We see in verse 10, the Magi were overjoyed. Magi had walked a long distance to find the king of the Jews. Yet how did they respond when they finally found Jesus? By joy, worship, and gifts. Acts chapter 17, verse 25. And he who and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. Acts chapter 17, verse 27. God did this so they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being as for as some of your own poets have said we are his offspring. God has called all of us to seek him so that we may be saved. We follow him not because we have to but because we want to. But we, but we must have faith in God or we have nothing. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Magi had faith. Why else would they travel so far for the Messiah for one thing? They truly believed he was the king of the Jews and was told in the Old Testament. They humbled themselves by bowing, by bowing and giving presents. Magi are an inspiration to all of us to 
to us all, in that they heard the calling from God and responded and believed. What inspires you this season? Is it a God-centered Christmas? What inspires you? We respond. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Verse 12. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. How do you respond to the Christmas story? It's Christ centered. The Magi responded with falling to their knees and worshiping Christ, the child, and they also presented gifts. And you see, the Magi knew that the baby was truly the king of the Jews and fell to their knees and worshiped. Our response should be the same, but is it? This year, let us fall on our knees and be overjoyed like the Magi were and worship Him with all our hearts. Psalms 95, verse 6. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. Anything and everything in our lives is a reason to bring us to our knees as we humbly bow before the presence of God. Amen. The Magi also come with gifts. We see in verse 11. They brought their very best to us. What is your very best? And what are you bringing it? Are you bringing it to God? Because God only wants the very best from us. For that is what he gives us. As we come closer to Christmas, we celebrate Jesus' birth. And in the coming new year, let us not forget what the true meaning of Christmas really is. For God is worthy of for God is so worthy of worship. What is God calling us to do? Not just now, but also in the future. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you do for us. And help us remember what Christmas really means. Not what the world thinks it means. Show us the light, the way, the truth. In Jesus' name, amen.